with me is David Robb, a veteran Hollywood journalist. He has been nominated for the Pulitzer Prize three times. In one of his books, he takes his readers behind the scenes during the making of many well-known movies in Hollywood and also reveals deep connections between the Pentagon and Hollywood. Thank you very much for joining me here today. Thank you, Medina. It's my pleasure. In your book, Operation Hollywood, How the Pentagon Shapes and Censors the Movies, you claim that the Pentagon selectively supports some movies and some filmmakers and that the way it is done is unconstitutional. Why do you think so? The Pentagon admits that they do selectively support some filmmakers and not others. If you are willing to give your script to the Pentagon and let them review it before you shoot the movie, and if they have any changes that they want to make, if they want to take out a portrayal of the military that they think is negative, that will hurt their recruiting goals, uh, if they want that taken out and you agree that you'll take that out or to put in something that's more positive to help them recruit people, then they'll assist you with your movie. Then you can, they'll grant you access to, to aircraft carriers and submarines and tanks and ships and planes. And if you don't, play ball with them, they won't give you that stuff. It's unconstitutional because the Supreme Court has ruled over and over and over again that the First Amendment states that Congress shall make no act, shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. The Supreme Court has ruled that that means that the government cannot favor one form of speech over another. And that's exactly what the Pentagon does. If you say what they want you to say, they'll help you with taxpayer-funded equipment. And if you don't play ball, they won't help you. But these are just, you know, this is just movies. This is just a form of free entertainment. Why is it that important? It's a form of speech, and that's what the Constitution protects government interference in. The government can't give you tax breaks by saying nice things about them. Mm -hmm. Movies are, are, are a form of speech, just like a book. If a book, if people thought that their newspapers or, or books were being sanitized by the military, if the military was telling book writers or newspapers what to take in and what to take out of their scripts, people would be outraged. Why do you think so few people are aware of this situation? At the end of every movie, at the very bottom of, the, of all the credits, past all the 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 music and all the actors and all the directors everybody is the long long list of credits at the very end there'll be a little thing saying we gratefully gratefully acknowledge the cooperation of the US uh, army or air force and that's the only way you'll know that this has happened to the movie you just watched so you mentioned in the book that there was a link between the Pentagon and Hollywood and that link was the film liaison office so what did that office really do well right here in Los Angeles, a few miles from the UCLA campus, there's a, a tall building on one entire floor as uh -huh. the film liaison offices of the Marine Corps, Air Force, Army, Navy, and the Coast Guard. And they sit up there and, they, and filmmakers who want military assistance give them their scripts, they look at the scripts, they mark out what they think is they don't want and, and make suggestions on how to change the scripts to get approval. Then if they make a deal, they sign a contract, then once they start shooting the film, they have a, a military minder who actually comes onto the set to make sure that it's shot just the way it was agreed to be done. And then before it's released to the public, it has to be screened in Washington, D.C. for the generals and admirals. And I think the American people knew that their films were being sanitized by the military and then pre-screened for the, for the in Washington for the generals and admirals that they would be outraged. So what kind of scripts were approved by the military and what kind of scripts were blocked? They want films and television shows that will aid in the recruiting and retention of military personnel. They want people to see a movie and to be inspired by the heroics and join up and join the military. And if a, a film negatively portrays anyone in the military, they consider that not helping their recruiting goals. So they will not help any picture that shows war crimes, that shows uh, military people uh, doing bad things, 
uh, drunk, cursing. You mentioned that they target children. They really do. They, they target children because they are the future recruits. And there's a, a, a great example letter. The, my book was based on thousands of pages of the Pentagon's notes and to the producers and their own internal documents talking about how they're wanting to uh, influence the, uh, the, uh, the filmmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the notes was uh, written from an Air Force uh, uh, colonel to the producers of the, the film The Right Stuff, mm -hmm. which is about the early days of the American space program. The colonel uh, told the, uh, the producers of this picture, the, the, it was based on a book by Tom Wolfe, which was filled with obscenities, lots of cussing, very funny, very colorful book, but the military didn't want that. And, and the colonel wrote, the obscene language used seems to guarantee an R rating. If distributed as an R, it cuts down on the teenage audience, which is a prime one to the military services when our recruiting goals are considered. So they, they, they changed the script in accordance with what the military wanted, and they, they took out a bunch of the obscenity, and they got a, a G rating, and then they got it the actually target. got a PG rating. Right, so and they, then got they got the target. They, they got the, the target audience, audience that they needed. By changing the script, and so everybody was happy. What are the benefits of such cooperation for Hollywood? What Hollywood wants, which is cheap access to really expensive military weaponry and hardware and personnel, and Hollywood has what the Pentagon wants, which is an audience, millions of eyeballs looking at their 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 movie and thinking positively about the military. Uh, of course, filmmakers have the right to say no. They can certainly say no, I'm not going to do it. And many have done that. Many many filmmakers have, have stood up to the Pentagon and said, no, I'm not going to do it. And they made their own movies. Or in some cases, they weren't able to make the movies. And many films have not been made because they couldn't get this assistance from the military. Can you name any popular, any examples of popular movies that went through the military control be before they were actually filmed? Yeah, James Bond, uh, uh, GoldenEye, the, uh, uh, one of the dupes in the film was an American admiral, and the military said, no, we'll, uh, we'll help you, but you have to change the nationality of the admiral. So they changed it to a French admiral. And, but then later they wanted to go to, they went to France to actually shoot the picture. Mm -hmm. And the French said, well, you want some of our stuff? Well, we'll help you, but you've got to switch the, 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 the admiral to something else. So they, actually, in the film, it's, he's a Canadian. Hollywood filmmakers were just given access to classified information uh, concerning the bin Laden assassination. What do you think of that? Well, when I was interviewing the, the, for the book, the producers of the films, they would always say, oh, no, we didn't give any trade-off. The only way you can really tell is by seeing the notes, the, the producers and the exchange of correspondence between the, the military and the, and the producers. I, I haven't seen those notes. I don't think anybody's seen those notes. I don't know if there's been a trade-off. If there was no trade-off, I don't have a problem. If, if the government wants to just release information to people and there's no quid pro quo, there's no deal, I think that's fine, but is, it's, the problem is when there's a deal made behind the backs of the American people in violation of the Constitution and American law, that's what I object to. How do you think this long-term collaboration between the Pentagon and Hollywood affected the minds of the Americans? When the American people are seeing hundreds and hundreds of films and television shows that have been sanitized by the military, and to make uh, military seem more heroic than it really is and never wrong and always good that this creates a false image in the American people's mind and I think it's it's helped make the American people a more warlike people thank you thank you